Good evening, folks. This is Steve Blackard again. Hey, I wanted to share with you a little bit about uh, generator cutouts. Uh, some of you have seen some of my posts on uh, different forums and Facebook about uh, the cutouts that I've been refurbishing, and I've had a lot of questions about them, so I wanted to share that. But I mean, here's an example of a few that are already completed and done, um, and there's quite a bit of work that goes into getting them to that point. But uh, today I wanted to go over a little bit about how I take them apart and how I adjust them. So uh, first off, let's look at, here's, here's a cutout, just the way they typically find one. It's kind of beat up. Now, the, one of the hardest parts of working on these is getting the outer cover off. And there are typically two, sometimes three spot welds. An example is you can see a spot weld here and another one here. This one looks like it just has two spot welds. So what I do to get these apart is first off, I'm going to use a Dremel and I here's an example here's the Dremel I use and I like using these carbide burrs uh, you can use the grinding discs and such they make a bit of a mess but these carbide burrs work really really well and what I do is I try to I'm just going to show you this I come in at an angle on the inside and I'll work that burr back and forth just maybe a quarter inch on either around that spot weld you don't want to grind on the outside because that's going to be visible. So you don't want that, that to be, be seen. So I just take a little on the top to level it off and then grind like this till I get down almost all the way, sometimes all the way through the spot weld, but usually I don't quite get all the way through because the spot weld drops down a little bit uh, on the outside. So what I do once I get them ground down pretty far is I have a little tiny chisel here. And this chisel is made from a little tiny pencil uh, pocket screwdriver. And I just cut, cut it off and I sharpen the bit. And, I, and what I do is I'm gonna use this little chisel and I'm gonna go in and you can see the gap between the inner and outer shell. And I'll put this little chisel on each side of where I've been grinding the spot weld. And then with a hammer and the chisel, I'm gonna hit it pretty hard and split that. I'm gonna work both sides of the spot weld until that weld splits. Now it takes a little bit of violence to do this, so don't you, you can't be shy about it. These cutouts are really durable, though. I've taken apart a lot of cutouts and never damaged one by 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 whacking on it to get it apart. But you have to work at both sides of the spot well until it splits apart. You might need to go back and grind a little bit more, and then do the other side until you get both sides the the, the weld split on both or at three points if it's got three spot welds. Once you get them split and you get it apart. Usually the, the inner set the inner the main inner part will drop down a little bit and you can see it start to separate. But often these are still really tight. The, the outer cover is still tight on the, the inner inner cutout. So here's what I do to get them off after that. I'll take a generator body and here's an old Model A generator body and I will put this on and I will mount it on the cut on the, the cutout on the body here. And once it's mounted, um, in fact, let me do the here's here's one that I've already taken apart, but let me just kind of show you this. So I will I will mount this on the generator. So I'm using the screws to hold it down tight. And then once it's mounted with the cover, you can take a take a screwdriver and use the, the screw as a fulcrum and get underneath the outer cover and start prying it up on both sides and that way you can kind of work that cover up until it comes loose you might have to work from the back side here but use the generator body and the screws as a fulcrum to pry up and get that cover worked its work its way up till it starts coming off and then you'll be able to pop it off so that's how i get them apart that's that's probably some of the hardest part of doing this really and i might spend 10 or 15 minutes sometimes working slowly grinding and getting them split till they come apart so so but once you get it apart um, then you're down to the inside and the cutouts are very simple um, so let's just talk about them a little bit all a cutout is is an electromagnetic switch so when a generator is mounted on a car uh, and it's hooked up to the electrical system the purpose of the cutout is simply to disconnect the battery from the generator when the generator is not running and cutouts were used I'll say the cutouts were used all the way up into the um, into the 40s on some cars and some motorcycles but they, they they go back to the earliest days of automobiles but when the when the battery is is hooked up to the generator to the, to the electrical system of the car if the generator is not running 
the battery can discharge back through the generator because the generator is grounded it can can to can discharge the battery so the cutout is there to disconnect the generator from the electrical system when the generator is not running so it's just simply an electromagnetic switch it's all it is it's got a magnet and it's got a set of points right here now these points are what open and close when the generator starts putting out current these points are designed to close at about six and a half to seven seven and a half volts and when those points close and I'll just push them down you can see when they close that allows the current from the generator flow out to the battery to the electrical system of the car when the car is turned off and the generator is no longer putting out electricity the points open to prevent the battery from discharging back through the generator. So it's a very simple electromagnetic switch. Now there are three adjustments that I typically do on these, and uh, three things to look at. Once you get them apart, well actually several things to look at. Uh, one is you have a heavy outer coil, and then there's also a very small wire that comes off from the inside right down here, and it's soldered to the base. And that is the coil that actually pulls the point block down. So check to make sure that that little wire is not broken. It should be soldered to the base. Um, I've only found one that was that was broken, but uh, but but it's pretty easy to solder that back on if it is. But the three things that I look at when working on these are first I'm going to look at the points. The point gap here it's just like gapping uh, ignition points. This should be somewhere in the fifteen thousandth to twenty thousandth range. Now, what you want to look at these points also, make sure that they're in good shape. They're not badly eroded. Uh, and a lot of the cutouts that I take apart, they actually are in pretty good shape. I've come across a few that were badly pitted, uh, either from something shorting out in the car and that was really causing them to, to flow a lot of current. Um, but often they're in pretty good shape. They just need to be cleaned and, and adjusted a little bit. And this is an example of a really nice one. These points are in good shape. Uh, the gap is probably here, uh, it's under 20 thousandths, um, so that's pretty good. Now the points can be adjusted, there's two screws here on the side. You know, these screws can be loosened, and then the, the lower point plate uh, is slightly slotted to allow a little bit of up and down adjustment. So you can adjust that gap a little bit by loosening the screws and then sliding. It doesn't have a lot, but it's a, there's a little bit of adjustment there to allow you to adjust the points as needed. So, but shoot for 15 to 20,000, somewhere in that area. The second adjustment I look at is what's called the air gap. And the air gap is what's here at the top of the coil. And it's the gap between this plate and the iron core in the center of this magnet here. Now this air gap, when the points are closed and when this is pushed down, should be maybe 10 thousandths of an inch. That's really thin, it doesn't take much. So you can look, you can eyeball that pretty easily, but a lot of times what I'll just do is I'll take a, a thin piece of cardboard or paper and slip it in there and just see if that goes in it okay. If that goes in and it pretty much closes it off, I know you're good. But you can use your feeler gauges. Now I have, you know, little sets of feeler gauges here I use for the points and I'll check the air gap. But to adjust the air gap, um, what you do is this little crossbar up here is what goes over the top of the upper point bar. Now there's a little bit of adjustment in this also if you loosen these two screws. You can move this bar up and down a little, but for the most part what I found the, the, the easiest way to, if I need to close up the air gap a little bit, I'll take a pair of little needle nose pliers and I'll just grab the top of this, this, this crossbar, and I'll bend it that way a little bit. And that just bends it down over and that'll pull the upper point plate down just a little more to close that air gap. But if I do that, I may have to adjust the lower point, lower, bring that lower point down a little bit also to maintain the proper point gap here. So, uh, so those are the two gaps that I look at. And then the final thing is the actual closure voltage. When does this close? And that's what I want to adjust and check for. So, what I found is if you have these set by the spec, which is about 10,000 when this is closed and 15 to 20,000 at the points, um, that's going to be pretty close. That's going to typically close at you know, six and a half, seven, eight, maybe eight volts or so, somewhere in there. Um, I try to set them to six and a half to seven volts. But what, what we need to do, 
what I often find is they, they're a little bit high. They close in eight, nine, sometimes 10 volts for some reason. I think maybe just in age. But the way to adjust that is I need to relieve the spring tension just a little bit back here. And the way we do that is we take a flat blade screwdriver, holding this, and put this flat blade screwdriver into that slot, and then I just pry up just a hair on this, just a little bit. And, and it's almost imperceptible how much I move that up, but that will lighten the spring tension, and that will let that close a little, a little bit lower voltage. So those are the three adjustments that I'm gonna do, I wanna do. Now this one is in really good shape. The air gap was, was, was really good. The point gap looked really good, so I didn't have to adjust it. Um, but, uh, but I think it was closing a little bit high. I actually had this one on my car and I just took it off. It was working fine, but I just took it off because I wanted to take it apart to adjust it and just inspect the points. Uh, so. So to adjust the voltage, what I do is I use a, a variable power supply over here. Now I've got one a cutout already hooked up here that I've already refurbished. So I want to show you this one and then we'll put this one on here and see how it is for adjustment. So I'm going to turn the power supply on. It's already hooked up to the cutout here. And I'm going to raise up, bring the voltage up and you're going to see on the meter here when the points close and you'll hear it if I'm not talking here. Okay, so right there, it's closed at about uh, six and three quarter volts. You can see the six there on the on the red scale. I back the voltage off and it closes. So, so as if this was a car when it's running, as soon as the car starts up and you get above a bit above idle speed, about 800 RPM or so, it's going to start putting out current and those points are going to close and that current's going to flow out to the battery. When the car shut off, then the voltage drops off the generator and the points open, preventing the battery from discharging back through the generator to ground. So that's how it works here. So let's go ahead and swap this around now. I'm going to take this one off. And we're going to hook this one up. And we'll see how it's doing. So the hookup here, um, so from the power supply, the input side of the cutout is the open end of the feet on a Model A cutout. It's always the, the terminal that's closest to the feet. You know, the, the feet are not centered on the cutout. The feet are offset. The input side coming from the generator is always in the side where the, that has the feet closest to it. So I'm going to have the power supply positive going to the input here. And, and then I'm going to measure with a voltmeter over here on the, on the output side. And then both the voltmeter and the power supply get grounded here on this foot. Okay. So let's turn it on and let's see what it's doing. All right. There we are. This one, we just adjusted. It was, it was closing at about 8 volts when I first took it off the car. And now you can see here. Uh, we're at about six and three quarter volts. I just adjusted that spring tension. I lightened it just a little bit, and now that spring tension is uh, is got it right about where I want it. Close it again. Back the voltage off. The points open, and then again, if the generator was the car was starting up, it would start putting that current out, and uh, it varies somewhat. But here, okay, so that's I gotta go back and forth a few times playing with it. Okay, so that's about six and a six and a quarter there. Yeah, around seven. So it varies, uh, but but it's in the range of six, you know, between six and a half and seven volts is where it's open and closing, and that's what we want. Now, one of the problems that people encounter with original cutouts and makes people a little bit gun shy on them is you know the story of the points sticking close you shut the car off the points stick close the battery discharges you see your ammeter go way off the negative side and it can you can discharge your battery if you're not paying attention with a cutout on any of these old cars with this you should always look at the ammeter when you shut the car off and make sure the ammeter is back at zero it's not deflecting way to the left on the discharge side but what causes those points to stick is 
typically when the points get really badly eroded. They're so badly eroded that instead of having two flat contact points, they're offset and they're actually getting hooked together. So that's what you want to look at, look for when you work on these. So just make sure the points are in pretty good shape. These points were really, really nice. So I really didn't do anything. But I will say, if you need to work on them, work on the points, there's a couple things to use. So here's a typical point file, typically used for ignition points. Um, it's a little thick to get in between here with at 15 to 20 thousandths. Uh, so if, if, if the points need more work, well, first let's start with the easy side. If they're, in this case, they're really good shape. These don't need anything. So what I typically use is some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. Not emery, you know, they always caution don't use emery, but wet dry sandpaper works really, really well. And I'll just fold a piece in half, I'll slip it in between the points, and I'll just run it back and forth. And that just removes the oxidation that builds up on the points. Just do that a little bit. And then I use a quick dry electrical contact cleaner to blow them out and blow a whole air, the whole cutout out, really. But that just cleans the point surface. But if the points need more work than just a, a quick cleanup with the sandpaper, what you need to do is remove these two screws on the back side by the spring, remove the, these two screws, and then that will remove, that will lift this bracket off. There's another plate behind it, and then you can lift off the whole upper point assembly and then you can pull it out from underneath the the bracket here and that'll let you separate the points and then with them separate you can use the point file if needed to go ahead and dress and try and smooth up each one of those points and then put it back together and again adjusting your point gap for 15 to 20 thousandths and that air gap but it try to get that at about 10 thousandths when it closes so it's just two simple screws to take it apart to get at the points now I have uh, I had uh, a cutout I worked on last week. I, I had, it's funny, I had two different cutouts. One had one of the feet broken off of it, so it was no good. But it had a really good set of points. Then I had another cutout that uh, was in good shape, but the points were just badly burned up. They were just awful. So I took the good points off the cutout that had the broken foot, and I, re I removed them. I took these two screws out, and then it's just a matter of unsoldering this wire. This is the main wire that solders, that connects to the lower point plate, unsoldering that, and then just removing the upper point plate here, and I just swapped those on over to the other cutout, and so I was able to create a good cutout from two bad ones. So, uh, but once you dress those with a point file, if necessary, use the point file, put them back together, and then adjust your point gap, again, using the slot here, and your air gap with by just bending that little bar a little bit and then uh, work on your on your uh, volt closure voltage now not everybody has a, a variable power supply I understand that so so you don't necessarily have to have that I think it's really it's a nice tool um, I got this one off eBay for like 50 bucks it's an old one but they have electronic ones they're they're really a fairly inexpensive tool and it's uh, very useful with you uh, you know working on old cars for lots of things so it's a, it's a nice thing to have but if you don't have a variable power supply, just make sure your point gap and your air gap is set right, and um, it should work pretty well. It should be pretty good just by setting it that way. If you can, if you have the ability to test it, it's nice. But but if not, just put it on your car, and you know it, you can put it on your car without the cover and hook it up, and then start the car up and test it out. And if it closes when you rev it up, the points close and it starts charging positively, you're in good shape. It works. It works fine. So, so that's what you need to know. So that's my little uh, 10 minute rundown, I think, on, on how I, I, I work on these cutouts and what I do. Um, when I put them back together, I will, I will say, uh, let me follow up one last thing. When I put them back together, I clean them up and I've been painting them. I don't do the plating and I found some metallic paint that simulates uh, the, uh, the, the zinc type finish pretty well, or kind of zinc, cadmium, um, and even a little bit of turn plate. They all look fairly similar. And then the copper plated ones is just the very, very early cutouts uh, up through January of 1928. But when I put these back together, um, you don't have to, to spot weld them again because when you put them on, the, the black plastic insulator that goes in, that, that the screw goes through, actually is has a, uh, a cutout that fits in fits in the the opening here so when you put that in it locks it goes in and when you put the screw and tighten the screw up it locks it in place the cover can't come off anyway so you don't have to do that you can you don't have to, to uh, 
spot weld them back together. I mean, if you want to, you could put a dab of uh, epoxy on them, but it, it's not really necessary, except for the very, very early ones. So let me bring this, these very early ones, these are, are completely built a lot different. They have integral lugs in them, and you can see the cover is open on the bottom on these, whereas these, it's, it's a closed hole. So it locks, when you put the insulator in, it locks them in place. This is open and has a, a cardboard insulator. I make these cardboard insulators. So these, I do use a dab of epoxy once I've put it back together to lock it in place. But uh, for all the rest of them, and these cutouts basically the same all the way up from up until, uh, well, I think Ford was still making service cutouts up until the, in through the 50s probably sometime. But they're all essentially the same with just different markings on them. But, uh, but once you put it back together, you put the insulators and the screws and everything, it's going to be locked in place and it's going to be good to go. Make sure you clean the bottom of these really well on a wire wheel. You got clean metal here. The cutout has to ground on the generator, so it has to have good contact. So whenever you install the cutout, make sure you scrape a little paint away around the screw, the mounting screw holes on the generator, so the cutout will ground properly uh, to the generator as well. So I think um, that that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, these cutouts are are really really well made, much better than the reproduction. Uh, aftermarket ones that are available today and uh, often they can be put back in service and give many many years of good use with just a little simple cleaning and adjustment so uh, I hope you found this helpful uh, if you got any questions uh, you know message me and, and I'll try to help you out so thanks for watching take care